Today I'll be discussing the game Outreach from SPI in 1976, the Outreach to Conquest of the Galaxy. I appreciate subscriptions. I'll, uh, so I do these games generally from the 70s and 80s and I appreciate interest and uh, I'll be doing these fairly frequently so if you want to be notified of uh, which ones I'm doing next, please subscribe and click on notifications. So this is an excellent game. It's one of the earlier games, you know, like I said, 1976. The cover art is very nice. It comes in what's called a, a flat tray, which they don't, it's been like, you know, you know, it's like almost 40 years old, so it shows a bit of wear, and you have to kind of maybe tape edges a little bit, but the idea is that it comes in this and it contains a big big tray as you described. The cover is very nice. It's one of the nicer covers I think. Very nice kind of sci-fi look to it. Okay, so it's a bit a bit worn but on the inside cover it's got a little bit of theme. Outreach is a grand strategic strategic simulation of intragalactic conflict. The scale of the game is generally huge. The 23 by 35 map depicts an area some 28,000 light years by 50,000 light years, including about one third of the galaxy. Outreach is concerned with a period of vast explosive expansion by an ambitious dynamic civilization. Each X on the maps is color-coded to indicate the relative star density. The player is charged with the task of guiding the destiny of a civilization. Gives you a bit of theme. The components, so the, the rules I'll talk about in detail. It's 16 pages and it's, has a lot of good... It's not a huge rule book, but it's got all you need and it, it actually includes a lot of subtlety in there. And there are these four sets of player tables. And I'll talk about them, but it's scatter effects. Uh, how likely you are to have problems when you're moving around. Interaction is how you interact with others. And it's an interesting approach. By You do it secretly and then you compare to see the effects of combat or not, etc. There are autonomous forces which come into play, which, you know, aren't, um, you know, non-player forces, and this is what, you know, if they're hostile or allies or not. Uh, and this is, so there's, the component, so basically there's f fleets of starships, and then there's stargates, which are basically bases, basic locations of civilization where they come from. And this is how you, when you're fighting, you can reduce other people's stargates. Uh, if it, kind of a, a battle combat table here, you explore the galaxy, the likelihood you are of finding resources and systems. So each, each hex is very large, it's like 1,200 light years, so you, even if you're in the same hex you may not see each other, so this is the likelihood of you seeing each other if you're in the same hex, basically. And this is, you know, the, the main combat results table, and then this is here for converting percentages from this, but we'll talk about that. Compares the attacker, it's the defenser's, defense's strength. Fate table, so part of this is fate. There's a chance of different, like, seeing civilizations or having problems in your civilization that reduce your forces, getting advanced technology, etc., is all captured on this. So there's four of these for four players. And this game can play solitaire or up to four players. And then here's the tray, which is very nice. Like the rest of it, it's four years old, so it takes maybe a bit of care and there's a reinforced backing unit you may have to tape a little bit, but um, but it's nice. It's got uh, comes a dice. It's got these covers for the trays. A nice mix of components. So it's very nice. 
As you'll see, the game accomplishes a lot with not a very large, there's a good quantity of components, but there's not a lot of um, different types of components. So I've shown all the different component types here. So there's four different players, and each color obviously indicates a different player. Each player has groupings of star fleets, which one star fleet force can include various mixes of explorers, regular and also dreadnoughts within that. And I'll show you, you can track that. So same, and they, you have numbers of course, so you can keep track. So that's the four players. So they, and then there's also non-player forces, which also have fleets and stargates. And these are, there's four different ones that can come up randomly. And each of them, so their fleets don't have groupings. They're individual, an individual, like a regular or dreadnought. And NSF would indicate you know, regular force, for instance, a D on the back would indicate a you know, dreadnought. So those are individual forces for each of the autonomous. And then these are their stargates, and, and their stargates have a value that's set on the back. And we'll talk about forces, uh, resource points by stargates. And then there's these beacon stars, which give you makes it easier to basically move around the board. There's wisdom chits, which if you if you get if you get you know one or two wisdom chits, you have a chance of increasing your civilization level. And the, so these are resource chits. When you discover a system, when you're exploring, these are the amount of resources that they can be developed when you convert them into a stargate that they can be developed to achieve. And this would be, and this indicates different areas of the map. This is on a spiral axis. This is on the fringe of a spiral axis. And this is, you know, off of a spiral axis or in the entrance space between them. Plus the counters. So one item that isn't included but that is useful is a player aid to track the resource points of the stargates and the composition of the star fleets. And that's what I've shown here. There's other people have different ways of doing it, but I found this is useful. And you're uh, you're welcome to take a screenshot of this and use this if you want. And so the map is very nice. It's very large. Can give you a sense of scale. Yeah, it's approximately you know 25 inches by like 34 inches. And it's very nice because it's got in each hex there's a you know pattern of stars. It's probably difficult to make out, but it almost gives like a 3D effect. And it shows a different so this is this the core of the the Milky Way. And these are the spiral axis arms. This is where we are. This so so the kind of yellowish golden is a spiral axis space. This is a, the fringe the spiral axis and then this is the intra area between spiral axes and then this is a dust cloud and this is the nucleus and this is where the wisdom chits are at the center of the nucleus there's a like a randomization tool here to help you and it's it's, it's uh, astronomically accurate from what you know, they viewed the Milky Way looking like in 1976. There's several uh, actual stars. You know, Rigel, Deneb, for instance, that are located on the map in the correct locations. Dust clouds where they can't see beyond. Um, the scale is you know, approximately correct. So it's a very, very nice map, really gives you a sense of you know, immersion and it's actually somewhat educational as well, so it's very well done. So the components are very nice. So I'll step through the rules here. It doesn't have, it's a lot of rules, but 
they have a lot of um, there's a lot of subtlety in there. 16 pages. It's black and white, but it's got a lot of illustrations. Table of contents. Introduction. It doesn't show a lot of theme, but it does reference the the previous game Star Force, and this is building off of that. So Star Force talks gives a little more theme and it talks about the psychic uh, transportation abilities, etc. So just kind of introduction talking about how it's set up. It builds off the Star Force game and shows the future after that, where basically the humans are starting to expand in their galaxy. Glossary of Terms. Starfleets, which are represented by, by these counters, but basically Starfleets contain a mix of individual fleets, which is a larger fleet can contain regular explorer and dreadnoughts and they together they're combined to a larger fleet. Shift is the way of moving. It's uh, instantaneous movement of star fleets from one point in another. Stargates, which are the sources of you know, resources and supports movement. Uh, friendly autonomous units, um, what contact and interaction is, so game equipment, we talked about that. So the sequence of play, it's for multiplayer, one player, you, each player does a, a game turn. So first of all, you determine the order of players, and then you're shifting, which is regular. You which is basically your motion, and then you do reserve shifts, which you're allowed to. After you do your regular turn, you can do you know one more to kind of keep a little bit. Everybody kind of guess what you're doing. Exploration, where you look for you know resources and systems. Interaction where you can contact if there's contact you interact There might be conflict and then there might be forces that are Reducing the strength of a, a stargate And there's fate Which gives you various occurrences depending on You know how many systems you have has some effect on that and you can try to influence fate by resources. Then allocation, this is where you develop ships, develop stargates, etc. So shifting. So you there's a the higher so there's technology levels. You start with one generally. Um, so there's a civilization level range where it's relatively safe to transport and for it's the square of your level so for one it'd be one for two it'd be four and that that affects like how if you can shift safely to you know stargates within that range without having a scatter but if you do larger scatters there's a chance of um, well, scatters happening, or means you you are not going where you, you don't end up where you intended to go, and you might lose a percent of your force, for instance, and that's based on die rolls and adjustment factors. So, for instance, if you, you had two to your die roll, if your star fleets are explorers, free civilization level greater than one. So free civilization greater than one, you add two to your shifting uh, Starfleet's 
if they have explorers. And also if there's a beacon star, if it's a friendly stargate. So that, that affects the benefits of having those uh, strengths. So for instance, if, you, if you're going three hexes and you didn't have any modifiers, you rolled a two, you would basically go three hexes away from where you tended and then just randomize what direction and you would lose the percent of forces, you know, 10% of your forces. So that's how, that's how, that's how shifting and scattering works. And also the If if you're going across the dust cloud, you can only you can only go one hex across that. You can't shift across the dust cloud boundary. Continual shifting. Then, if you if you have several, like for instance, friendly um, stargates within your your civilization level range, you can just jump from them without risk from scatter, and you can kind of jump across the board. Or also, if there's Beacon stars, you can also use empty jump across the board. Talked about the scatter. It's pretty straightforward. Exploration. Also, if you if you scatter, if you're jumping into the galactic nucleus, you automatically lose your fleet. And I point out so the different so can there's different types of this is you know the third of the galaxy. These are axis space, basically arms. These are fringes of a spiral. This is interspiral space, and these are you know, dust clouds. So those are the different. And then this is the galactic nucleus. Contact. So each of the, the hexes are quite large. So each hex is, you know, 1200 you know, light years across. So even if they're in the same hex as another force, it's not a guarantee that you'll see them. And there's a so there's a contact table to determine you know if contact does occur. Where you refer to your contact index, and you do a die roll. So the contact index is the is a number of, of friendly explorer star fleets in the hex plus the total of all the friendly star fleets in the hex. So that, that's how you get your, your contact index. And then you'd refer to your table to see if a contact happens. So if there is contact, then it uh, you indicate that on your ship by turning over and seeing there's contact. So then if there is contact, there's a there's interaction, and this is another interesting aspect. So, so green might say that they want to be neutral to yellow, and then yellow might say that they want to be hostile to green, and then you then you compare the two, and then you go down to this matrix. So, for instance, turns out green wants to be neutral to to yellow, but But yellow wants to be hostile to green. So it would move down here and it gives you it indicates the effect on index. So for instance, there will be an attack bonus. They they will have an attack bonus. And this is a way of managing your kind of intentions with others and it shows you you know there's benefits to having alliances or hostility, but 
it's kind of an interesting aspect of how you can kind of mask your intentions, but then when you see what the other person intent is, then you are affected by that. So it's kind of interesting. And then also, if you come across an autonomous force, you would do a die roll to see here if they're basically cooperative, neutral, or hostile, and then you'd indicate them here. So conflict that may occur during the conflict phase, the interaction conflict phase, between non-friendly, non-allied forces, if there's a <clears throat> if there's been contact in a hex and indicated with a marker, so each player simultaneously indicates whether they're going to attack. They indicate their approximate conflict capacity. And then you resolve the the conflict on the on the conflict table, where you actually, once you know the true capacity, you so the conflict capacity of a force, the total number of the star fleets and the hex minus the number of explorer fleets plus number of dreadnoughts, so you get a deduction for the Explorer and an addition for the dreadnoughts. And then you compare the ratio of the attacker's conflict capacity to the defender's. Then you adjust your die roll, so for each dreadnought you add one to the die roll. For each dreadnought, start fleeing the defending force, you subtract one. And then so based on that, adjustments to the die roll and your relative percentages of attacker to defense conflict capability, you get the ratios of percentage of loss of the attacker and defender, and then you apply those to your star fleet. So reduction is if a if an opposing fleet is on a you know the stargate they're opposing they'll they can basically reduce reduce the resource ability of the stargate and that's only if there isn't a um, support defending star fleet there, otherwise the star, defending Starfleet would do that. Then for reduction is this table. So you compare you compare your force, you know, dreads out, etc. with adjustment factors to your Stargate capability as far as resources and then you do a die roll and it shows if if there's neutralization that occurs. And if, so once the, once the Stargate is neutralized, it has no, no benefits anymore. It does, you don't get resource points, you can't use it for shifting, so. You can, you can, can deneutralize them though. The friendly player can deneutralize them by applying star fleets to, to develop them. Fate, then... So then in a turn you do the fate table and so basically you take your, your total system points which is your summed stargate values and you consult the table, you roll dice, um, you can adjust the die roll by expending resource points. And so this gives you various options. So, so on the fate table, some options are A, basically uh, a species wants to sever ties and then you lose 10% of your stargates. 
be a charismatic leader rises to prominence and you you, you lose 30% of your forces and there's more theme there C uh, long staying inability of two species to get along is a conflict 50% dissolution D you get a highly nutritious drug but unfortunately it's addictive so you get 70% dissolution E gradual trend to of decaying of central authority 80% dissolution F authoritarian regime re assumes control 90% dissolution and decreased civilization to one so some pretty harsh consequences and then G through J are autonomous forces of different numbers of stargates and star fleets K and L are increasing civilization levels so for K on the on the fate chart like K2 for instance indicates you need two wisdom chits for that to happen so you'd have to have two wisdom chits and then get the appropriate role in the fate table to get increasing two levels or for the increasing one level you need to get one get one wisdom chit and then roll the appropriate table to get the L so, so that's the fates and then like I said you can put resource points so that you can reduce the chances of getting the bad ones because you basically shift shift down on the table so you kind of get away from the more negative ones then autonomous units, uh, there's four different types and so the it's like I said in uh, in some phase these will appear and you might get two stargates and five star fleets or five stargates and twelve star fleets in between and so then you you place them near where there you have a discovery and they're they're passive they just exist there until they're basically contacted and um, when they're contacted they can become active and then when they're active the discovering player is the one that controls them and and for solitaire there's rules for how they how they move towards stargates and also you know general rules for how they move towards like if they're hostile to forces like they would like move rapidly to the player who they're hostile to to um, neutralize stargates etc and then resource allocation so this, this is where this you know it mentions you can you know write down and scratch paper but there's different ways of doing it out there but this is one that works um, you can keep track of your different fleets as far as compositions like you have your fleet numbers and then you put if they're you know regular dreadnought or explorer keep track of how many your different stargates keep track of you know what what their value is and then different scenarios go for different turns and then you can keep track of you know the total system points um, and if there's dissolution you know what what your system points are reduced to and then maintenance if so if you have multiple fleets in a uh, in a, a given you know fleet group you basically anything above one unless an explorer you don't discount but number of fleets above one you take that many maintenance to maintain them basically and you deduct that from your your available resource points from your system you may expend points to you know denutralize stargates you deduct that and then you can expend points to build fleets and how many fleets you build on a stargate is limited by your technology so for instance level one you can only build you know one at a time on a stargate
And so regular Starfleets cost three resource points, Dreadnoughts cost eight, Explorers cost five. So you would, for whichever ones you're building, you would basically keep, you know, keep the cost here and then check the balance. And then in, in addition to building Starfleets, you can also So when, if, if you have a, you know, resource chit and you want to develop that, if you put a fleet that has, a fleet group that has two fleets in it, you can basically convert those two fleets to making that a Stargate. And then that Stargate has zero. And also if you have a Stargate that's not developed yet, you can put fleets on there and use that number of fleets to raise the, the value to the maximum. Like for instance, you could raise it from, you know, the max here is three in this, in this hex, which is a, a spiral axis space. Um, if you had, if you had one fleet in here, you could raise that, you know, one point. So it'd be from zero to one. And then you'd update the Stargate value. And then once the Stargate is its full value, just replace it like that. And then, so this is useful for that. And then Beacon Stars are these these items. And so if if you These are these are beacon stars that are exist. The name stars are, are beacon stars, but undiscovered ones are this one. And if you go to a region um, past dust clouds where there there's no line of sight to existing beacon stars, you can you discover other ones, and then you random you roll for you basically roll the dice and add two to it to how many beacon stars you discover, and then you. By rolling dice, you determine where to put those beacon stars in this newly discovered area. So that's also interesting. And then the beacon stars are useful for when you do your uh, shifting, um, so that they reduce your scatter effects. And then interstellar dust, you can only, you can't shift you can only shift one space across that you can't shift multiple across the interstellar dust so that's the, what happens there and then so to to have a chance of increasing your civilization you need to get a wisdom chip and that's what these are and these are placed at the galactic core and there's 10 of them and one is an x and if you get to one of the X, it indicates you know some effect given this scenario. So, for instance, in the solitary scenario, it means that uh, the core is exploded. So you have to go down to the galactic core to get the wisdom chits, and then in your fate table that gives you an option of increasing. You have a chance of increasing your civilization level. So that's basically it. And then the, so the scenario I'm going to do is a solitary scenario. It's a PSL leap. So in SBI's first science fiction game, Star Force, the history of humanity was traced up through your first contact with space non non-human telesthetics and subsequent formation of the pan League, which include two such extraterrestrial races. In area some 48 years in diameter, contained completely within Hex 1316 in the outreach map, comprised the map for that game. Each Hex in outreach is some 1200 light years in diameter. Therefore, the scenario picks up a distant and hugely expanded PSL descendant civilization, occupying an area some 10,000 times its original size. So it's from the initial star force, it's basically been expanding. And it is still dynamic and growing. So the forces that start set up these 
three stargates at these locations, Sol and then the, re, the other locations. And then it tells you the, the, the stargate values on those. And I've, for instance, on here I show that these are the stargate numbers and these are their values. And then the the fleets, there's one explorer, one regular in 1316. And a regular on 1216. The initial re available resource points are five. Civilization is level one. Victory conditions. The player wins if he manages to raise civilization of the PSL to two at the end of the game. It's a game like this, 25 turns. If the player gains control of the x wisdom chit, it signifies the discovery of the fact that the nuclear core has exploded, an explosion is spreading outwards in a gargantuan chain reaction at the speed of light. The game is automatically lost, and the player has about 40 million years to entirely evacuate the galaxy, give or take a few hours. So then the way I've shown that on this sheet is, so the fleet, one and two, one is one regular, one ex explore, two is one regular, and then like I said, here's the target values, any of initial balance that you'll add to your star points. And then as far as set up the map then, these are the stargates in the defined locations, Sol, and then the other the other two. And then there's two fleets. One is on in Seoul. And the other is on 1216. So that's what the setup looks like. And then the so the wind, wisdom chits done are in the galactic core and they're randomly selected from the 10. So one of those might be the X or it may not be. So that's set up and then we'll play. So in the beginning of turn 17 here, I thought I'd show the progress and then I'll go through an example game turn. So I've been tracking you know, the progress on the sheet here. Again, it's a custom sheet, but you can do any way to track it if you want. Basically, these are the different fleet composition, compositions. For instance, fleet, you know, one has, you know, two regular. Fleet 10 has two explorers, so they're moving around. These are the different stargates. Some have been fully developed and some haven't. For instance, you know, 31 it's you know, it's not you know fully it just has a, a point of zero at this point, it needs to be developed. Others have been fully developed, some are partially developed. Like uh, 38 for instance is partially developed. And then the fleets I have, this one's going to the galactic core because I want to I get a wisdom chit to increase my, to have a chance of increasing my civilization level. I need to get that wisdom chit and bring it back to a, a stargate. These are going out and exploring. This one will he'll go through this dust cloud here and then he'll be able to see some beacon stars which helps movement. Um, this one's going to work towards you know developing this one and the star stargate is going to be developing you know, ship's course. This one discovered this autonomous force, so and this force is hostile, so this force will start coming against me here. So that's interesting. And these are the various resource shit. So since these have a value of zero, again, this is. It's a uh, three source max of you know spiral axis, fringe, and then 
inner still inner spiral space, so it's zero for these, so it doesn't make sense to develop these. So I'll get going into a turn then, and I'll zoom in on this. So the sequence of a turn is you, if you have multiple players, you determine shift order. I'm just doing a solitaire, so you do your shift, you do your exploration, you do your interrelation, which can involve combat, your fate, and then you do your your resource. So. so I'll do movement in order of the different forces I have. So fleet 201 here will move. He's moving out to explore here. Move up there. And since my technology level is one, there's not a risk of just moving one hex, but if I move multiple, there's a chance of scatter. So, Fleet 2 here. So he's going to be moving through here. He'll just move 1, 2, 1 also. And then, since he's coming to an area where there's there's uh, there was previously blocked site to a beacon star, he's going to he can see new beacon stars now. Okay, so you do this and you roll dice and add two to it. So three, you discovered three beacon stars. So as far as your placement, so for Solitaire, the player chooses a hex row, rolls the dice twice for each hex, for each hex, for each hex that, he, that I roll a nine, I place it there, so. So these are the, the three beacon stars that are placed, and then they will be useful when you shift to them, you not, you, there's no chance of scatter if you go to them, since they're like a navigation aid. So then, 203, we'll continue moving out here. Two or four, we'll move out here and explore. Two or five, we'll stay here to develop. Two or six, we'll move here to develop at Stargate. Two or seven, we'll move back. Two or eight, we'll move more rapidly to the Galactic Core. So there's a three fur to the scatter table, and they're gonna go, try to go three hexes, so, roll, and they're okay, there's no scatter. If they were to scatter, then they would have, they would be moving to an, you know, one or two, etc. adjacent hexes in a random direction, and they would lose some fleet, so, they're able to move three. Two oh nine will stay there to develop, and then two ten will stay there to turn that into a stargate. So that's movement, and then exploration, exploring, nothing. So they need either one or two, depending on their. How many they have. They didn't find anything. Didn't find anything. Getting unlucky, didn't find anything. Everything sixes, didn't find anything. So there was no, no discoveries. If there had been a discovery, which would be convenient for demonstration, you would, uh, for instance, if some of these had a score, so for instance, if there's two regular, the die roll would be two, if you have two explorers, in a regular, you would be four plus one, so five, and you'd shift to this. And then you roll a die roll, you would find an exploration. And if they were, you would randomly draw a resource chit and then put it under there to indicate the capability that they can develop there. So that's exploration. 
and then interaction I'm not going to be doing anything there, I'm just trying to get away from these then the fate roll so you look at your your system points and there's currently 20 you total up the values of your your stargate and then you consult here's the the fate table so obviously you go that one six okay looks like something's gonna happen H I believe that's an autonomous race so the, here's the fate H is a appearance of another autonomous force, plays three stargates and seven star fleets on the game map. So if, if I hadn't done any exploring, um, then I would ignore that, but I did do exploring, and then I'll see which of these. So it's actually here where there's an autonomous force. So, set them up according to the, you know, one through six. And they're, the resources they generate are in the back and they don't change. And there's seven fleets and so you distribute them among forces, the Stargate. So that's interesting. And then, and then resources. So this is where you do development, etc. So first of all, He's here, and 206 has one fleet, so they can move 231 up to a value. They can increase the value of that by one. You need to take away Starfleet, and you'll keep keep this here until it reaches its max. Okay, and then this one is turning that into a Stargate. So he has you need you need two fleets to turn him into a Stargate. So he's got two and then he'll turn that into a Stargate. He'll indicate that, and you'll take him off the board. Okay. Um, what's that? And then developing fleet. So then we calculate how much. This is the number of system points. If one of the die rolls is that you from fate you lose basically stargates, and that didn't happen here. So. Um, so basically the maintenance is when you have multiple fleets beyond one that aren't explorers, you deduct that. So this there's two, there's one extra, so it's one, two, so there's two maintenance. So the total res resources you have are 18 plus what was previous, so it's 33. And then I'm going to build some fleets. To 206 and 205 I'll add explorers. I'm sorry, 209 and 205 a lot of explorers. So that takes 10. So I expended 10 points and that gets me down to 23 remaining. So that's how that works.
So that's the completion and turn for me, but now the autom the autonomous forces. Um, first of all, these these are hostile, and so what'll happen is you take the number of of these according to the stargate, you place them there, and then the rust. You're going to have going towards the nearest star, nearest stargate, which is four of these. And each of these forces only has one um, regular star fleet. They don't have different groupings of them. So they, this is Civilization 1, and they have to go 3. So they roll in the fate table. 6, so... I'm, I'm sorry, they roll on the scatter table. Say so roll six. And actually they're okay, so. It looks like there's gonna be combat there. You stay there. And we'll see if these are hostile or not. So we roll on the random interaction table. So they're also hostile. And then next turn they'll be they'll be moving towards. And then also on here there's an interesting a way of tracking the the interactions you keep track on the matrix. So since both these are hostile you'll place markers saying their hostility. So they have the autonomous forces have Stargates, they can develop, they can develop system or ships themselves. So they have three, four, four. So each of these can develop a regular star fleet with one remaining for next time. So that's a completed turn 17. So that's Outreach, the Conquest of the Galaxy 3000 AD from SBI in 1976. So once again we find that one of the earliest, in my opinion, one of the earliest sci-fi games out there is one of the best and holds up really well. Um, you know the components. There's a lot of good things about them. The the flat tray, you know, it doesn't. Over 30 years, you know, some you know, might have some problems with the the plastic on the cover, but it's got a really nice tray. It's got a really nice tray for the components. Um, actually, I really, I mean, I like the counters. Especially, I mean, it's okay if you don't run them, but if you're on them, it's even better. A nice, nice bunch of nice bunch of counters. The map is outstanding. It's you almost got like a 3D effect because it shows clusters of stars within the different bands, and it's. It's astronomically correct as they could be in those days, and so it's you can actually learn some about the galaxy from it, which is pretty cool. Um, it's very abstracted in that you know it, it, the movements happen over generations, so it has to abstract. But you get your different you know groupings of kind of forces you can put in your star fleets and it extrapolates from the the star force which is their previous game as far as, you know, the look of the components and everything. Um, so basically you have, you have beacon stars, you have 
enemy forces, well they can be allies or enemies, but forces that pop up. You have different resources to develop. You develop your fleets by developing systems. You have a goal of trying to increase your civilization levels by going to the galactic core and there's risk of movement in different ways. There's effect of basically the galactic, you know, different kinds of features as far as the arms or dust clouds, etc. Um, and it leaves enough that you can use your imagination about the different fleets. Um, it doesn't give a lot of, you know, sci-fi story of individual, like, people or civilizations within that, but I guess that would be difficult to do because it's over generations and that changes generation to generation. But it gives you the basic, you know, what what it means to do your psychic shifting and uh, it just it gives you enough to use your imagination with the stuff. So I'm a, a big fan and I'd highly recommend it. I'd, I'll give it a, a nine.